Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel to watch this video. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is uh, to take a look at the Blender benchmark that AMD demonstrated at their New Horizon event to showcase how fast uh, their new Ryzen processor is. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the IPC during while the image is being rendered. We're going to take that information and we're going to extrapolate what we think the IPC of Zen is going to be. And the way that we do that is we're going to run this program here that you see on your left. It's called Status Core. Uh, this is a new application. It's one that I've written. Uh, it's not available just yet. It will be shortly. So this is just a quick preview to kind of see what it can do. Uh, and as you can see, it is presently showing us in real time the temperature, the speed, the IPC, the MIPS, and the, acti and the activity uh, taking place on the core right now. Now, a quick note about this computer. This is a very beefy computer. It's a few years old, though, so it's not the fastest out there. Uh, it is an Intel Xeon CPU. It's uh, an E5-2695 version 2. That means is this is an Ivy Bridge generation Xeon with a base clock of 2.4 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.2. What you'll see during the demonstration is pretty much all of the cores are going to be locked at 2.8 gigahertz. And uh, we've got a total of 24 cores and 48 threads. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the benchmark now and just keep your eyes on the screen and see what happens. Uh, press F12 and we are going. As you can see, the activity graph has lit up and the image is being rendered. We see an average IPC of about 1.6 and an average MIPS of about 4.3, maybe 4.4. Uh, and like I said, all of the cores are locked in at about 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, now, the image uh, has rendered very quickly on this computer. Like I said, a lot of cores, a lot of threads. It's very fast. And the, uh, the total time here is 19.88 seconds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to prep a, uh, prepare a spreadsheet for you guys uh, with all of the information that we just saw in that, uh, uh, in that demonstration. And then uh, we'll be able to work back and, and use to calculate what we think is the IPC of Zen during that demonstration. All right, everybody, I'm back. Uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've prepared a spreadsheet that we are going to use to extrapolate the IPC of the new AMD Ryzen processor. Uh, what I did is I took the video that we just recorded a moment ago, I paused it at three different locations to take three different samples. Um, the first sample was uh, towards the beginning of the benchmark, the second sample uh, was taken from the middle of the benchmark, and the third sample was there towards the end. Um, so I took the MIPS from each one of those frames and I put it into this spreadsheet so you can see the MIPS from uh, frame one are in column B, the MIPS for frame two are in column C, and the MIPS for frame three are in column D. And then I went ahead and, and uh, averaged it all into column E. So uh, you go down here to row 27, column E, you can see that the average number of instructions uh, per second is 4.4 billion. If you add up all 24 cores, uh, then you come up with this number here, which is 106 billion instructions per second. Well, the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to calculate the total number of instructions that, that were executed while rendering that image. And the way that we do that is we merely, uh, we, we simply take this number here, the 106917, and we multiply that by time. And the time value is how long it took to render the image which in this case was 19.88 seconds. That gives us a grand total of 2.1 trillion instructions. Um, so that is the number of instructions that were executed while rendering the image. Well, this is enough information that we can now use to uh, work our way back and figure out what the core IPC of Zen is. The way that we do that is we take our grand total and we divide it by time. And the time value in this case is how long it took the AMD processor to render that image. Uh, and if you look at the video, the exact number, uh, according to the Blender printout, was 35.1 uh, seconds. Uh, and so what that does is it gives us a total MIPS for the processor of 60 billion instructions per second. Uh, the next thing that we want to know then is, well, what was the average MIPS for each core? Well, that's easy to do. We simply take this number and we divide it by the number of cores, which is eight. And that gives us a number of 7.5 billion instructions per second. So, so that's pretty good. You, um, you can see that that's quite a bit higher than the average MIPS uh, for this Xeon processor. Uh, do keep in mind that uh, this processor was at 2.8 gigahertz during the benchmark. Uh, Ryzen is at 3.4, so it would be expected that it would score higher. 
uh, but this is very, very encouraging. So, but anyway, here we are. We are now just one step away from being able to reveal uh, the core IPC of the Zen processor. And this is exciting because I don't think anybody knows this. Nobody's ever looked. Uh, and AMD certainly hasn't told us. And so this is, this is the big, um, you know, this is the big reveal. What is the IPC of Zen? Well, let's find out. All we have to do is we take that average uh, MIPS and we divide it by the clock speed, which is 3400. And uh, that gives us 2.2 instructions per clock cycle. So there you have it. The Zen uh, the Zen Core processor is executing 2.2 instructions per clock cycle when rendering that image. Um, so you guys are probably wondering, well, what does that mean? What is uh, what is 2.2 instructions per clock cycle? What does that really mean? Because I don't have anything to compare it against. I don't know uh, what's normal, what's average, what is uh, what does the Broadwell E do? Well, let's start with this computer right now. You can see over here in column F, I've, I've uh, put down the average IPC uh, during the benchmark. You can see that it was 1.59. So right off the bat, you can see that uh, the, uh, the Ryzen processor is significantly faster. Uh, in fact, it is 40% faster than the Ivy Bridge. So when AMD talks about their 40% IPC uplift, well, you can say that's the IPC uplift over Ivy Bridge. And that is, that, that is damn impressive because Ivy Bridge is not slow. Uh, of course, it's not as fast as um, Haswell or Broadwell or Skylake or Cabby Lake, but you know we're talking about a processor that's a couple of years old. So, um, so this is very promising. This is very encouraging. But uh, what about other types of applications? Uh, you know, what kind of IPC would we expect? And and that's a bit more of a difficult answer, uh, question to answer because it really varies and it depends on the workload. Uh, but I would say, you know, just uh, for starters, um, most of your boilerplate C++ code. Uh, that is compiled uh, with uh, aggressive optimization, it's probably going to be running at between 0.9 and 1.1 instructions per clock cycle. You know, uh, sometimes getting a little bit higher, 1.2, maybe 1.3, but uh, typically it's not much greater than that. Now, if you, if you go and you take some time to really optimize your software and get it running quickly uh, on the processor uh, specific specifically to that architecture, uh, then you start touching 2.0 uh, instructions per clock cycle, and that's considered pretty good. Like, if you can take your software and you can get it to 2.0, uh, it's usually a point of diminishing returns. You don't want to spend a lot of time trying to make it faster than that because it's just really hard to do. Um, and I have not seen anything other than synthetic stress tests that can actually do greater than three instructions per clock cycle. Uh, and I'll give you a, kind of an example. Um, when I'm, when I'm uh, transcoding with uh, uh, Sony Vegas, I'm getting about one instruction per clock cycle. It's actually a little bit less than that. Uh, I think Handbrake was about the same. Uh, I'm going to take a look at that in, in another video, so I'll, I'll give you guys an update. Uh, and then there's the other one that I looked at was uh, CPU-Z. They have their little stress test uh, built into that, so I ran that, and it was getting about 2.5 instructions per clock cycle. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of what the range is uh, for your average application. And uh, uh, so 2.2 is, is actually pretty good. We can assume that the Broadwell E was running at pretty close to an average of 3.4 gigahertz during that, during that comparison. So I'm just going to say right now uh, that I would consider it to be clock for clock equivalent to the Broadwell E. It is neither faster nor slower. Uh, I can't give you more uh, detail than that without uh, without running a Broadwell E through this test. And I'd love to do that, guys. Uh, but I, I just don't have a couple of grand sitting around to go buy that chip. So uh, it's just not going to happen. Anyway, guys, so uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, in closing, I would just like to say that uh, I, am, I am pretty excited about my new software. It's called Status Core. Uh, my hope is that you guys will go and download it and use it and give me some feedback and let me know uh, what you think.